Nice. Eleven years. The red tomato. On cable, that's like 400 years. Yes, it is. It's so true, though. The hours never end on cable. It's true. Well, congratulations. And boy, we turn over as a group. Yeah. All right. We were true. We were talking earlier about Joe Biden. Yeah. And I'm personally nervous for him. I think there's a lot at stake here. And I think Nancy Pelosi, deep down, is probably nervous about how this ultimately ends. He. For a while, people thought he's the greatest chance of getting Trump out of office. Mm -hmm. Every time he's in a headline and his son's in a headline, do you think that's good for? Is he handling this well? Are you, or, are you nervous just because you think he's running a poor campaign, or you think I, that? I, I like Joe Biden, yeah. and I think he's someone that could do great things in terms of bringing character back to this country. I'm mm. nervous that all of this will end up hurting him the most. Well, I mean, when you're at the top, people take shots at you, yeah. Yeah. and he's been the front runner from the very beginning, ever since the moment, ever since before he even got into this right. Democratic race, and with 20 whatever thousand candidates running on the Democratic side, to have one clear front runner for all this time has been a big deal, and so he's going to take the shots. Has he handled, handled it well? Though, How he handles so the shots is another matter. I mean, I think you have to wait till you get closer to the general election yeah. to see what it's going to be like if it's him versus Trump. But the Democrats have a real fight on their hands now, too. He started as the front runner. Elizabeth Warren is Thank right you. now topping him in some national polls. Mm -hmm. uh, Trump has come after her in totally different ways and sort of, mm -hmm. to my mind, sort of racist ways. Um, has he stopped the Pocahontas thing? He has, but he says he's going to bring it back later. Once we give Chief Fields a little chance to forget yeah. about it and then bring it back later and suck him. And it's yeah. kind of early, isn't it? Yeah. The still Democrats, early. I mean, Democrats have a debate next week. They've still got, they're going to have 12 people on the stage yeah. next week. It's too it's early. Oh, my God. Pray for those moderators, <laughs> those poor people. <laughs> You've been there. I have been there. It, why, why do you think I'm such a mess? <laughs> That's why you fell. I mean, Is that what happened to your foot and you lied about the whole thing? Down, but I believe it was the debate. <laughs> I believe it was. You know, I was trying to figure out what I wanted to ask you, and I was thinking about it last night. And I have the unique experience that I briefly worked at MSNBC. I worked yeah. at Fox News for much longer. I obviously work here now. I don't know what that was. Um, and I would like to say, you know, it's interesting being in the in the underbelly of both places. Yeah. And conservative media dominates liberal media across the board. And ratings, their viewers are more loyal. I know that you were friends with Roger Ailes. Mm -hmm. What do you think was the key? to conservative success and conservative brilliance in Fox News that, again, they just they just lap you guys and <laughs> still do. And that's your own verbiage that you used one time on Bill Maher. Yeah. No, I don't. I mean, I'm not. There's no I don't think there's any shame in it. Listen, I'm, I was in talk radio before I was mm -hmm. ever in TV. Mm -hmm. And you want to talk about conservative domination mm -hmm. oh, in yeah. talk radio. Mm -hmm. I mean, part of it is that the conservative media world has set itself up as you can only come to us, don't believe anybody else, everybody else is against you, we're the only people who will tell you anything that you need and you should not read the paper and not trust any other sources of news. And when you kind of lock in an audience like that, even if you don't have a majority of the country listening to you or watching you, you get them uniquely and you get them all day long and you get them passionately. Now, I don't think that's good for the country because I think you end up giving people in a single stream news source in a way that's not great. Right. I think in the rest of the media, you know, we're always bringing on people from different papers and can, you know, I, I cite Fox News reporting on my show and stuff. You know, I'll take reporting from anywhere. I don't care. It seems like they have a more simplistic point of view. Well, it's more of a political operation. I mean, that was one of the things I learned in getting to know Mr. Ailes. And it's not like we hung out or anything, but I talked to him about the business. Mm -hmm. And he really approached the business as a political operative who was trying to get Republican mm -hmm. candidates elected mm -hmm. and trying to move the Republican Party to the right. And he was running that as a constant campaign. I'm telling you, the people who are run, running MSNBC are not running a constant political campaign. Campaign. They're just running a TV network. Mm -hmm. yeah. And when you don't have that same ideological drive, I think you end up producing a different product. We're sort of doing two different things. But I don't think that Mr. Hannity and, and, and myself are doing parallel shows. No. I think we have different projects. But they're in disarray now. Um, so bravo. Well, <laughs> well I, no I, comment. I, we're always trying to get more conservatives here. And I think across the board on all networks, there should be more fusion of